Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about multicast paging. Now, multicast paging is something that may not be familiar to all of you guys. It wasn't familiar to me until about, oh, a year or so ago. And uh, it definitely has its place in the voice over IP world. And I wanted to discuss the differences between regular paging and multicast paging and then show you some examples of how to use multicast paging within the free PBX, both in the free PBX directly and also by utilizing something like the CyberData uh, VoIP paging server. This thing's awesome. So we're gonna dig into this in a little bit. Uh, but first, let me talk about normal paging. Okay, so here is a quick little Visio mock-up that I did of normal paging. So we can see here, uh, you've got your free PBX server, you've got phones or devices that are in a page group. These can be not only phones, but also regular SIP enabled pagers, things of that nature. Uh, they are all basically in a paging group. The way that a page works when you have phones in a paging group is that the free PBX creates as many channels as you have devices in that group when it sends out that page. It's basically creating a brand new call to every single one of those devices simultaneously. Because of this, free PBX limits the number of devices you can have in a paging group to 40. 40 is the absolute maximum, and some of their lower end servers really aren't even powerful to handle 40 devices being paged simultaneously. Why is that? So the reason is because, uh, the analogy that I like to use is building a bridge, right? Basically, it takes a lot more effort to build a bridge than it does to drive across a bridge or walk across a bridge, right? So once the bridge is built, the amount of effort to drive or walk across it is very minimal compared to the effort that it took to build that bridge. It's very similar with SIP channels in Asterisk. So a lot of the CPU hit uh, on Asterisk and on the server itself is creating a call. Okay, so if you create a call, if I pick up the phone and I dial out to somewhere else, creating that call, creating that SIP channel in Asterisk takes a lot of CPU power, or I should say a lot more CPU power than it does to actually maintain that call as I'm talking. So imagine now, go back to the paging scenario where you've got 40 phones in a page group. If you would do a page, Asterisk is creating 40 simultaneous calls or it's building 40 simultaneous bridges, right? And then once it's built, you know, just talking and paging doesn't take a lot of effort. So that's why they limit page groups. So Let's take a look instead at multicast paging. So here you can see a layout of how multicast paging works. It's a little bit different. It works with a multicast IP address and port, okay? And there are specific IP addresses or IP address ranges that you need to use for multicast. I'll get into that in a second. But asterisk when you page basically makes one channel to the multicast IP address. Okay, so then all of the phones and devices, other paging devices, things of that nature, listen to the multicast IP address. So you're not actually creating 40 channels out to 40 different devices. You're creating one channel out to a multicast IP address that all of these devices are essentially listening to or subscribe to, if you will. Now, this is a much better solution for environments where you have a large number of devices being paged. So for instance, a hospital or a school or a retirement home, right? Something like that where you're gonna wanna do page all announcements periodically to large, large numbers of devices. Multicast is absolutely the way to go. Okay, so what multicast IP ranges are available? We see here 234.2.1.1 colon 2000. So that is the default range for my um, paging server here, the uh, CyberData VoIP version three paging server. That's the range that it gives by default. But uh, I, I was curious, well, why that range? Why 234.2.1.1? That seems odd. So if you look at Wikipedia, and you look at multicast addresses on Wikipedia. There's a lot of information here, but I am not the absolute go-to authority on multicast paging. I know that if you put in the multicast paging IP address and you get it right, it works, okay? So this is me kind of learning this stuff. So if I say anything wrong, please correct me in the comments. But 
Looking through the Wikipedia page about multicast addresses, there are specific ranges of designated addresses for all sorts of different uh, multicast purposes. Uh, and you can read through this list. I'll put a link to the Wikipedia article uh, down below. But I was curious where the 234.2.1 uh, came from. Uh, because if you look real quickly, I'm going to pop over to my CyberData paging server here. If you click on page groups, it is by default configured with 234.2.1.1. So under multicast addresses, this says unicast prefix based IPv4 multicast addresses. So the 234.000 slash 8 range it says here is assigned by RFC 6034 as a range of global IPv4 multicast address space provided to each organization that has a slash 24 or larger globally routed unicast address space allocated. So what does that mean? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot smarter people than me that can uh, fill me in in the comments of what that exactly means. It also seems like you might be able to use this 239.000 slash 8. So this says this range is assigned by RFC 2365 for private use within an organization. Okay, and it goes on to you know give a little bit more information about it. So regardless though, I stick with what was pre-configured in uh, this device, and as long as I basically, looks like if I pick either a 234.000 slash 8 or 239.000 slash 8 uh, multicast IP address and range, and then as long as I have that set the same, the same IP address on all the devices in that paging group, it'll probably work just fine. It also works off of a port too, so if you look back at the cyber data server, this first one is uh, 2, 234.2.1.1 on port 2000. And then you see here's 1.2 on port 2002. This device has up to 100 paging groups configurable uh, within the paging server. Very cool. So we'll get back to that in just a minute. But I wanted to talk about how to do multicast paging in FreePBX. So here we have the FreePBX server. And there's a couple of places where you can set it up. If you have Page Pro, which is one of the free PBX commercial modules, uh, you can do multicast right off of your page group. So if I come over here to applications and I choose paging and intercom, here's a page group that I have, page group 300. I'm going to edit that page group. And right down here, we have RTP multicast, right? So this allows me to assign a multicast IP address and port to this specific page group. But if I hover my mouse over it, it says RTP multicast disabled requires asterisk 13 or higher. And I'm only running asterisk 11. So one caveat there, you have to be on asterisk 13 to utilize RTP multicast uh, with a page group in FreePBX. Now that doesn't mean that multicast doesn't work in FreePBX at all. It absolutely does work. Uh, for instance, I have set up this server here. And as part of this paging server, uh, the first paging group that I set up, which was this 234.2.1.1 running on port 2000, uh, is a multicast IP address that this uses. And I also set up a Sangoma S500 to use that same multicast IP address. And I also set up a Yealink T23G to use that same multicast IP address. And finally, I also set up the... Uh, paging amplifier that I did a video on a few weeks ago utilizing this horn and this uh, PoE based paging a uh, SIP paging amplifier also to listen on that same multicast IP address so all of these devices those two phones and this paging device are part of the same paging group and it all uses multicast now the reason I don't have this one plugged in and working right now is because when I was testing it and paging in this little small room with three devices, so I'm paging from this phone out to three devices that are in this same room, it was feeding back like crazy and it was driving my dogs nuts, so I ended up just disconnecting that. But take my word for it, that does work along with the, uh, the two phones that I mentioned as far as multicast paging. All right, so let's take a look at where you would set a multicast paging IP address in these phones. So if I come over here to settings and I click on the endpoint manager, pull out the tray, and click on the Sangoma template, for instance. And I'm going to click on my testing uh, template. That's for this phone that's uh, right here next to me. If I click on the Options tab, 
uh, here we go right here. Multicast enable, enable. Multicast address, boom, right there. So 234.2.1.1. Now if I wanted this to be a part of multiple multicast paging groups, I can then just do comma 234.2.1.2 colon 2002. And if I click over on my cyber data paging server, you can see that that is the next IP address and port in this group of uh, paging groups or this list of paging groups here in the cyber data paging server. Okay, so one more thing that you can do with multicast in free PBX. If I come over to the models tab and I click on the S500, notice if I scroll down here, there is an option for this line key to be multicast paging. So if I select multicast paging, and then I say multicast, this is just a button label, you can make that page all or make it say whatever you want. And then you put in the same paging, uh, multicast paging IP address and port number, this will also be able to multicast page right off of a button on the phone. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but right here in the bottom corner, it says multicast, right? So that is the multicast page button. If I press it, check, 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 check. So I'm paging out through the multicast paging address, but of course, the only other device that receives multicast pages on that uh, address is this Yealink phone right here. Okay, so that is how you set up multicast paging within the free PBX. Let's take a look at what you can do with this uh, cyber data VoIP paging server. So this thing's pretty awesome. It does configure or it does connect with older analog paging systems. So this is the type of thing that you would want if you're creating a hybrid um, you know, voice over IP and analog paging um, infrastructure and you want to be able to page both your analog devices and your SIP devices, you would use something like this. And the way that it works is this becomes a single extension on the free PBX, configurable with the endpoint manager. Let's take a look at that real quick. So I'm going to bring up the CyberData brand, and then I'm going to click on the CyberData default. And this is extension 251, which is the pager server v3. If I click on it down here, there's nothing to configure. You're just giving it a SIP account. Uh, and then you assign that SIP account uh, to an extension and then this becomes that extension. Okay, so this is, in my case, is extension 251. Now, if I dial 251 on one of my phones here, enter the two-digit zone number. So it says, enter the two-digit two digit zone number. I plus zero, zero. Check, 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 check. check, 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 check. <laughs> So there we go. So that was paging through both of my phones here, right? So using multicast to page through both of my phones. Now, the two-digit zone number in the CyberData paging server corresponds with all of these here, right? So we've got 00, zero all the way up through 99. So you can have up to 99 paging groups in the CyberData paging server. Uh, let's take a look at what else this has. Let's go through the tabs here. So home, just general stuff. It tells you the status. Here's the IP address. Here's the primary SIP server, which we can see is registered. This uh, device does have a night ringer so that you can um, upload a sound file or just use one of the built-in sound files. It becomes its own extension. So then after hours, if you hit this paging server, it will basically just page out to whatever page group you want and play a sound file. Okay, uh, let's click on device. Enable line in to line out loopback. I don't know what a lot of this stuff is. Enable line in to multicast. So that's referring to these two RCA connectors. There's a line in and line out on the back. I'm not exactly sure how you're gonna use these. Uh, I imagine that they would be for connecting to a legacy uh, amplifier or something of that nature. Uh, like I said, I, I'm not completely familiar with this device. I've just set it up for the first time uh, within the last couple days here. Uh, there is a relay as well, so this, just like the other uh, paging amplifier, has the ability to do uh, to open up a, a door or trigger a relay, I guess. Network is pretty standard. This is just going to be your VLAN settings, your network settings if you're static or DHCP. If we click on SIP, we've got our SIP settings for the main server. We've got our SIP settings for the night ringer. Again, both of those are configurable with the free PBX endpoint manager. We get to our page groups. So we've got paging group 0. If we edit one of these, I'll say I'll edit paging group uh, one here. You can also add a security code. So if I say one, two, three, four, uh, then we can say save changes. 
And now, theoretically, if I page, it's going to prompt me for a password if I go to uh, paging group 01. So let's try that. 251 send. Enter the two digit zone number. 01. Enter the security code. 1234. And now I'm paging. I don't have any devices hooked up to that paging group, but uh, that is how you can also secure a paging group. It has this uh, fault thing, which I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, when I did the video on the paging amplifier, uh, people were telling me about what the fault is in the comments, but I still don't quite understand it. Uh, then we have just like the paging amplifier. Here's all of our audio files. We can upload up to 10 custom audio files. Those are to be used for the Night Ringer um, or for, I believe there's a way to actually um, sort of page or, or call one of the paging groups and have it automatically play a sound file, but I have not yet figured that out yet. And then events is some sort of like syslogging, uh, provisioning, and then firmware updates. So all very standard from there. But this device is, again, it's really cool. It's just a self-contained paging server. And uh, again, this, is, would, this would be my go-to device for a, for instance, a hospital where you could set up multiple paging groups, you could set up, a, you know, an all page, you could set up a paging group for each floor or each department, and then, you know, basically have a list of those paging groups for the receptionist where they can dial one extension, enter the paging group number, and then page out to all of the phones that are subscribed or listening on that multicast IP address. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this look at multicast paging in FreePBX and using the VoIP v3 paging server from CyberData. Uh, if you have any questions on multicast paging, again, I'm not an expert on multicast. This is just sort of what I've learned and the learning process that I've been going through just trying to figure out this device. Uh, but if you do have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments below. I love it when some of my subscribers answer questions for other subscribers. That's my favorite thing to see on, in my comments. I love the community that is out there, and especially for you guys that answer and take your time to answer other people's questions, you're absolutely very much appreciated by me, so thank you so much. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.